Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. I am doing the coolest series ever and that is I'm analyzing the vocals of the raw, naked, original track vocals of the most incredible artist ever recorded. And today, I'm gonna take on Steven Tyler. Uh, and the song is called Don't Wanna Miss a Thing, so you're not gonna wanna miss this. But before we get started, if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel. That would be really cool. Um, I also have a singing course. The course is called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can find it right here at kentamplinvocalacademy.com. And I have a free singing forum there as well, uh, where if you're just interested about singing, you're getting started at singing, you're an advanced singer, whatever the case is, we've got over 20,000 members in the forums now, all discussing and negotiating how to get to all these really cool places. So now what's so unique about uh, these isolated vocals, I'm gonna do an analysis and a tutorial as we go along, but is that you get to hear the original track. It's like the coolest thing ever. So uh, without much further ado, I'm gonna just get started and just dive right in. So again, this is Mr. Steven Tyler, Aerosmith. Don't wanna miss a thing. Let's do this. I could stay awake just to hear you breathing. Watch you smile while you are sleeping, while you're far away and dreaming. Cool. Now, I am not going to play favorites. I'm going to just call a spade a spade, tell it like I see it. So bear with me. Um, so if you have man love for Steven and I say something you don't like, know that I like Steven too, but I'm not going to just ingratiate Steven because he's Steven. I'm going to, um, again, just specifically lay out things I hear. So right out the gate, it's pretty cool, right? Um, you get to hear just his raw, naked, isolated vocal, which is great. Uh, the very first thing I notice, and I'm going to break down not just the singing part, but the recording parts, uh, you know, the intensity with which he's singing, uh, the fact that the track itself adds a lot of energy and makes you think you're hearing him sing with a lot more energy and power than he may or may not be. So we're going to kind of identify these things along the way. So I want to start over again and I want to just nitpick some things good and bad as we go. So let's do this one more time. Here we go. I could stay awake just to hear you breathe in. Stop. Now, he goes, I could stay awake just to hear you breathe in. Right. Now, on the word breathe, he hits what's called a plosive, and you can go, you hear this big pow, you know, pow, kapow sound, right? That is because he's uh, his, he chose to sing really close to the mic. So you have this big plosive. So he's getting a lot of really, really intimate dynamic, real intimate dynamic being that close, but you run the risk of hearing a lot of air in the sound as he's recording and the pop filter or the windscreen is not working as much as it should be because he's so close on the mic, which tells me he also uses a lot of air when he sings, okay? So that's a deduction. I deduce that, you know, he's, I could stay awake just to hear you breathing, right? So he's got a lot of in that sound. Now, by the way, depending on the mic that you're using, depending on how much compression you're, compression you're using, all these things matter. The, the, you know, the, the amount of width of the diaphragm of your mic. So that all plays a role in this too. But I just wanted to point that out along the way. So I'm just going to continue to break this down. But good intonation. I love his intimacy and he's already engaged me in the story. So right away, I'm in. I'm all in. And he's got really good pitch, which is great. Next line. Here we go. Watch you smile while you are sleeping, while you're far away and dreaming. So let's take that down. So watch you sound, na, 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 right? And I don't have all the lyrics in front of me, and I don't want to miss seeing a lyric and have you guys really hate me. But um, and I probably should have printed them up. But that's not the point of what I'm, oh, I'm going to talk about. Is um, he is kind of got bedroom voice, like kind of like he's in a he's dreaming about something, and you can hear him reminisce about the girl he's singing about or whoever he's singing to. And that's a crazy great art. So for you singers out there, it's not just about hitting the notes. It's not about just the best tone, blah, blah, blah. It's about the intimacy and him telling the stories he's going. Now, I've said this a lot of times on other, you know, songs and, and streams that I've done, live streams, but um, listen closely again. He's not singing for 
a big stadium. He's not even necessarily singing for the, the band or the instrumentation as it's going by, because we have none, right? So listen closely to the way his dream state of engaging you in the song, listen. Watch you smile while you are sleeping, while you're far away and dreaming. I could so, did you get that? So you're kind of engaged in this already, and he's not really, he's not singing that hard or heavy, and he's not doing the over-dramatizing, watch you smile away and dreaming. Like some people do, they like over-dramatize it, so, while you smile, Hey, 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 hey. He's real light. He's real ginger and real gentle on the sound. All right, let's continue. I could spend my life in this sweet surrender. Now, he goes, I could spend my life. So he's, again, he's dreaming in this sweet surrender. Right, so he's, he kind of leans into the sound a little bit more, so it brings more power and more emotion into the authority of what he's saying. In this sweet surrender, he's like, oh, I, I, I'm in this moment with you, right? So let's continue. I could spend my life in this sweet surrender. I could stay lost in this moment forever. Cool. Did you guys ever really think about how light he's really singing? I could stay in this moment forever. Right? He's not really singing hardly at all. Like he's almost got, you know, he's you know, he's letting the mic and the dynamics and the compression do all of his work for him. So the band is actually coming alongside of him and creating all this energy, giving him the ability to back off and be in the moment of the song. Okay? Let's continue. Here we go. I could stay lost in this moment forever. Every moment spent with you is a moment I treasure. Now, on this, if you notice, he takes a big hit of air, right, before he's ready to sing the next phrase. Well, that's a cue to let you know he's probably going to go up and he's probably going to lean into the sound or get louder on the sound. But if you notice, he does something I've been talking to you guys a lot about. It's called glottal compression. He's going to compress the air in his throat. Now, there's a caveat to this, which means kind of, you know, a warning or a danger warning, okay? Uh, a lot of times when we compress air, we... Moment of right, and we compress this and it's pinched and squeezed. But if you listen closely to what he does, he's actually allowing the throat to relax so that he can get to those notes without pinching and squeezing. Now, he notoriously does pinch and squeeze when he does um, a lot of his music, a lot of his songs, especially when he goes up really high. Yeah, 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 you know, all those different things he does. So be aware that there's two parts to Stephen. He doesn't always sing technically correct. That's not what he's about. Um, and most more times than not, it's why he had surgery not that long ago. Um, and the otolaryngologist with Stephen Zytel, one of the greatest um, ENTs in the world that did his surgery. Uh, he did Sam Smith's, he did Adele's, he did Lionel Richie's. He's done a lot of amazing people. Stephen's one of them. Um, but anyway, so because of the way he sings, he also had to have surgery. So I teach you guys in my singing course how to avoid that to still get to all of these cool places, but not have to uh, go to the ultimate, you know, <laughs> throat clip, so to speak. So let's listen to this again. Here we go. Every moment spent with you is a moment I treasure. Listen. Where a moment spent with you, right? He's kind of compressing. Is a moment I treasure, right? He's kind of holding his breath back when he's singing so that he's not letting so much air pass across the chords to dry them out, right? Because the overuse of air, remember, is the arch enemy to the vocal folds and it will dry them out and then you'll find yourself just really trying to belt and squeeze and scream and do anything you can to get the rest of these notes out. Next line, here we go. Where Every moment spent with you is a moment you. of treasure. Don't want By that falling. Yeah. 
<laughs> right? It's a little out of pitch. Go back and listen to the recording. He's kind of out of pitch, right? And he'll do stuff like that too because he just he's more about the vibe of it rather than perfection. And it should be kind of both, but in Steven's case, it's really, really more about the vibe. So know that as you're listening to it and then the harmony comes in. The harmonies are pretty spot on, the, you know, really clean uh, in pitch harmonies. I love that. Next line, here we go. Don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep because I miss you, baby. You Sleep, you hear the in there. So he's really close to the mic. So he has another plosive, probably driving the engineer nuts because engineers would probably want to make him redo the line because there was that plosive in it, which is explosion uh, of air on the diaphragm. But the vibe was probably so cool. He went, you know what? I'm just going to try to fix it. And oftentimes what they'll do in the studio is the split segment that happens. They'll notch out a bunch of low frequency, which you can actually hear them doing here. They'll notch it out for that split second the plosive happens to minimize the amount of air that hits the diaphragm. You're hearing the amount of air that hits the diaphragm, and then they'll put the EQ right back uh, to normal, right, um, as he does that. Now, you can also hear there's a fair amount of echo on it. I suspect there's even more echo in the original recording than what's here, so I'm not sure how, when we get these tracks, what condition they are really, truly the original recording. Is it all the reverb, a little of the reverb, none of the reverb, you know. So I, I can't speak to that, but when you listen to the recording, it sound like, sounds like there's a lot more. And the recording sounds like it's a, quite a bit brighter also. So the um, EQ that we're hearing on the vocal right now in its original form is not as bright as, as, as it is in the record. So chances are, the more bright they make the sound, the more they can use other reverbs that don't get real thick and tubby. And you're able to have all of this uh, big round reverbs that you don't hear quite as much because it's not so thick in the low end. So that's kind of what I'm hearing too as I'm going through this, but let's continue. Don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall. Sleep cause I'd miss yeah. you, baby. <laughs> and I don't wanna miss a thing. Cause even when I dream of you, the sweetest. Now he always said, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, okay, so I praised a lot of stuff. That drives me nuts. Steven, could you stop with the, uh, 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 all the time? He just like every other line. And it's kind of weird because when you do an Aerosmith song like this um, and you don't do that, you kind of feel like you're missing something, right? So it's kind of weird, you know? Um, so in the spirit of that, I'll let that slide, but it drives me nuts to hear that over and over again. Okay, let's let's continue. Sweetest dream would never do, I'd still miss you, babe, and I don't want to miss a thing. Cool. All right, now, there's there's some whiny, hey, i you know, right? I personally am not like that as a singer. So now I have to be really fair about this. I have never been a monster fan of Steven Tyler's vocals. And I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this. I just haven't. I respect him as an artist. Aerosmith's an awesome band. I grew up on Aerosmith. I, I've got all kinds of Aerosmith songs I've done and my students have done. I'll put all those in the description so you can see how we did when we're trying to do an Aerosmith song so you can gauge it you know, and juxtapose that against the original version. Um, but it's because I was more like, I liked singers singers and let me explain this. Early on in Aerosmith, I've talked about this in one of my other um, videos, is there's kind of two, um, let's call them time warps of Aerosmith, or you know, two different you know, time divisions I can divide of Aerosmith. There's early Aerosmith, the Dream On era, Toys in the Attic, you know, the whole album, which is a great album, um, where he doesn't sing with a lot of upper mid voice. So it was either lower belting stuff and a lot of screams. In fact, he was called the Screamin' Demon. That was kind of his, his name around town through that early, or the 70s, you know, he was known for that. Um, and it wasn't until later that he started singing with a lot of mid voice stuff, okay? Other people that did this are Ian Gillen, for example, right? So um, with, it, with that said, I actually liked the Lou Grahams. Uh, I liked the, you know, um, Mickey Thomases. I liked Brad Delp from Boston. Um, you know, like Steve Perry from Journey. When I was looking for belted mid voice stuff, or or really metal monsters, you know, like David Coverdale or you know, um, Paul Rogers didn't sing that high, but I liked his his tone. Dio, of course, you know, all those guys. They belted in the upper mid voice register, and I just like that sound. My cousin Sammy Hagar, you know, he was a belter in the mid voice, and Stephen didn't do that. So this is more of a later phenomenon 
kind of him being able to, to do this in his upper mid voice. So I just wanted to clarify that there's two parts to that. So um, as he goes through this, um, he has developed an amazing ability to sing high range stuff compared to his earlier stuff, which is kind of flip flop. Most people in the earlier stuff, they start out with a better voice, so to speak, right? And then their later in life, they kind of lose it and they don't have as good of a voice. Well, that's kind of been the reverse for Steven over the years. He's um, maybe some of his most difficult performances have been, you know, his later stuff and especially the movie soundtrack stuff and so on. So I wanted to add that caveat to this as we're going. Here we go, next line, and it's coming up here, right? Lying close to you, feeling your heart beating. And? and I'm wondering what you're dreaming. Now, if you listen to the harmonies, um, you probably don't notice this as much, and maybe it doesn't matter to you, but it does to me, because whenever I try to put a harmony on something, I want it to make sense. He'll have something that has nothing to do with putting a harmony on the original main body melody vocal, uh, but somehow it works for him. So he'll put a weird harmony and then sometimes it's like a major third and it, it matches melodically and then he'll go off of it or whatever. And it's just him and it works. So um, it's, a, it's a signature of some of the way he records and sings his stuff. So I wanted to add that as we, we continue. Wondering if it's me I'll see, yeah. Then I kiss your eyes and thank God we're together. Now, I also want to bring out that when I kiss your eyes and thank God we're together. He has a lot of really big motions in the face like this to get out his you know the lips <laughs> the Stephen Tyler lips again I'm not making fun of him it's just the way he sings if you, in fact let me back this up a little bit I want you to hear this part kiss right here, your so. eyes and thank God we are together I just want to stay with you in this moment forever forever and ever can you hear forever and ever right so he's dramatizing this in the upper register stuff more than he was in his intimate lower register stuff. But I kind of think of it more of a personality trait. He's a really flamboyant guy and he's real, you know, just very, again, very esoteric, very exotic, flamboyant, you know, maybe that's not the right words, but he's a very just blah kind of guy. So it fits the nature of the way he sings. And again, if you're trying to reduplicate his stuff, it's really hard to sound like Steven uh, if you don't do that. So. I don't wanna close my eyes. I don't wanna fall asleep cause I'd miss you. Because I remember. Babe. And I don't wanna miss a thing. Now, there's a tip off to me. I suspect, and I'd have to go back and analyze this, but that plosive happened, I think, at exactly the same spot as in the first chorus. What does that tell us? It tells us he didn't re-sing the second chorus. They probably took the first chorus and they flew it into the second chorus. Now, shame on you, Stephen, if you did that because old school guys like that, we like to make it a little different and we don't wanna just cut and paste, cut and paste or use auto-tune or all that crap. We want it, We want everything to be a little unique and a little different. And why that's odd is if you listen to songs like Love in an Elevator or, or you know any of the, the cool arrangements of, of songs that Aerosmith has, they go out of their way to give you really cool left turns in music and a lot of different nuance. It, and even the older Aerosmith stuff you know they go out of their way to make it unique so it's unusual that this would have been cut and pasted if it was I'm not saying for sure I'd have to go back and really analyze it but it sounds like it was just a little side comment along the way so even Steven Tyler cut and pasting possibly the first chorus second chorus all right let's continue Cause even when I dream I get, the sweetest dream would never do I'd still miss you baby and I don't want to miss a thing. Now, before we go on, if you notice too, in certain parts of the chorus, he doubles the vocal to thicken it up. Now, so I don't think we did that. I don't think he did that in the first first, uh, first chorus. I'd have to go back and listen. You guys can go back and listen and ascertain and determine that yourself. But, um, it, uh, so it adds a whole different dimension. Now, there's two parts to this when you double or triple, you know, track your vocal. Um, it makes it sound a lot bigger. That's absolutely true. And there are some other things you can do in the studio with some studio magic where you can make the sound sound big and fat without having to double the vocal. But this was a, a, is a thing that's become very, very, very popular. And, 
in fact, a lot of people don't sing anything without double and tripling their vocal. But if you'll notice in certain parts he does it, he doesn't do it all the way through. So he's doing it just to accentuate certain parts of the things that he wants to be more pronounced. Check this out, I'll back this up. A bit here. I still miss you, baby, Sing. and I don't want to miss a thing. Well, I don't want to miss one smile. Okay, I'm gonna go back even farther. Let me back this up more. So let's go to here. <laughs> the sweetest dream would never do. Sweetest dream would never do. Right? You hear all that? It's double track. Listen to it really closely. You can hear more than one vocal. So he's he's adding to this to build, 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 and make the vocal sound thicker. So let's check it out again. <laughs> The sweetest dream would never do. I'd still miss you, baby. Hear that? And I don't want to miss a thing. Well, I don't want to miss one smile. And I don't want to miss one kiss. Nice harmonies. Well, I just want to be with you right here. Be with you. <laughs> right here. <laughs> with you. Just like this. And I just want to hold you close. I feel your heart so close to mine And just stay here in this moment For all the rest of time Yeah! Now, if you notice too, um, Aerosmith is, whether it's singing Sweet Emotion or just whatever, he doesn't use a lot of vibrato, so that's and when he does, it's a it's a gilda, it's um it's a caprino, goat's wiggle, it's you know, so it's kind of unstable, kind of like Freddie Mercury he had a very unstable vibrato, it was very quick and and kind of almost nervous sounding, like a goat. It wasn't a big fluid uh, vibrato like Whitney Houston or you know bigger voice like that. That's more more technical voice. But but so his harmonies, one of the signature things about the harmonies with a lot of Aerosmith stuff is that he holds these whole tones without. Any any vibrato at all and then comes back and does the harmonies without any vibrato at all so it's real unison sounding real just um, straight line flat line if you're looking at a heart monitor it would just be very very flat listen closely again and that's kind of a signature Aerosmith sound also so back it up Rest of the time. Yeah. 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 That's all falsetto head voice in his screen there. So it's not, yeah! He's not pulling a bunch of mass up and pulling a bunch of chest up into the sound. He's not doing that. Let's continue. Don't wanna close my eyes. Don't wanna fall asleep. Cause I miss you, baby. And I don't wanna miss a thing. Cause even when I dream of you, the sweetest dream would never do. I still miss you, baby. And I don't want to miss a thing. Now, did you notice we didn't hear that in that chorus? So chances are it's a new chorus and he does have some different inflections in the way he sings the chorus and some of the harmonies that come in are a little different and you can hear him kind of weaving around the vocal. They're not exact. Uh, so it leads me to believe that obviously this was this was sung separate and different and then they they manipulated it a little differently to have it have a different feel so it doesn't sound like a robot or a machine stamping out, you know, here's the chorus, stamp it out, here's the verse, stamp it out, repeat the chorus exactly the same. There, it makes you feel different when you're in this chorus. So let's continue. I don't want to close my Cause I'd miss you, baby And I don't wanna miss a thing Cause even when I dream of ya Now listen, even when I dream of ya He's got, if I was, if I had sung a lot today Cause I haven't sung anything today So my voice is really clean and clear But if I had uh, sung a lot I could get that kind of raspy distortion It's kind of funny if you listen to it alone It's Cousin doesn't really sound that great, right? But it sounds cool in the track and it's Steven, so everyone gives an A plus because it's Steven. But let's take a listen to that. That, that, that scream doesn't sound that great. It's, it's Steven and that's cool, but check it out. I wanna miss a thing. Cause even when I try to tell ya, the sweetest dream will never do. I like, sweetest dream will never do. That's a great line. And the, da -da 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 -da. Those are cool melodic things, you know, they, uh, there's some musicality to that, which is really cool, some melodic value. But anyway, let's continue. I still miss you, baby, and I don't want to miss a thing. Don't want to cling. Right? Close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep. 
Now, remember me talking about him not pinching and squeezing? There's an example where he does. And that's one of the reasons it cost him his voice and he needed to have surgery. So there's ways to not do that, and I cover all that in my singing course. And again, you guys go listen, check out some of the of the songs that I've done, like look at my version of Dream On, and check out you know some of the other uh, students that I have that I'll put in the description. You can see how we fared and how well we did with this. But um, anyway, let's continue. If you don't want to miss a thing. even, real flat, no vibrato. I think it might be it. Yeah, that's it. Um, anyway, gang, so if you like what you heard again, please like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget I do have a singing course, man. I walk you guys through all this stuff. Stop by my singing forums. It's free and check out my next video.